you're not going to believe this. So, life is, is a balance between negative and positive, okay? So, you can't have black without white. You can't have dark without light. And unfortunately, as I have found out, you can't have pleasure without pain. So you've probably got an idea from that intro that um, you were able to surmise that there is good news and bad news. And, and well, let's start with the good news, which is always always a nice thing to do. So the good news is we're top of the table, we're 10 points clear, and we're unbeaten. We're still unbeaten. We've we've literally not lost a game the entire season. We've played 26, what it says we've played 26 games. We're 26 games unbeaten. I mean, that's just ridiculous. It's It's a record. For Serie C A, which is amazing, Simone Carazza is a top scorer with twenty goals, and and there's still quite a few games left in the season. Let's have a quick look at the schedule. There's still twelve games left in the season, so in theory, you know, he, we, he could be looking at thirty odd goals. So last game we, uh, on the channel was Pro Vercelli. We won that, if you remember correctly, despite me conceding a goal in the eighty fifth minute and getting a little bit worried. But we won it and it was fine. Um, and since then, we've won every single game apart from one. And it's got to the point where I'm kind of feeling like, is this normal? It, it just seems weird. I, and I kind of, for some reason, I've got kind of imposter syndrome. I'm not able to give myself credit for this. I feel like there's got to be something wrong with the game. Anyway, I was talking to some people on Slack about it. And the majority of people seem to say, you know, enjoy it. Because what's going to happen is you, you're going to get to Serie B. And then you're just going to get dicked every game. So <laughs> we'll see if that happens or not. Um, but in the meantime, we're doing very well. We are unbeaten for the whole of the Serie A season so far. 26 games unbeaten. It, it's brilliant. It couldn't be going any better. Here's a little montage of um, some of the goals we've scored since you were last with us. <laughs> Well, that's brilliant. Everything's going great, isn't it? Amazing. Well, not quite. There's an issue. As I mentioned at the beginning of this film, you can't have pleasure without pain. And uh, I've had too much pleasure, it seems. The karma's coming back to get me. There is some pain. And it's over on the finances page. So, what's happening here? Well... I always find finances very difficult to get my head around. I'm not very good at maths. I'm not financially minded in that way. And I think it's kind of fairly unrealistic to some extent. It's a bit of a cop out, but it's fairly unrealistic to some extent that a manager would be taking over, taking control of this kind of side of the club. Nevertheless, at the moment, we are being crippled by something and it is going to affect us moving forward. It's going to affect us in terms of the goals that we set out at the beginning of the save, which was um, to find a new bison, to get to Serie A, and to not financially cripple the club, which is currently what's happening. Everything else is on target, everything else seems okay, but that particular one is not on target. Um, 
And also, it's going to be a little bit frustrating if and when we do get to Serie B that we don't then have any money to invest in any new players and we're going to have to presumably rely on loans again or youngsters which may not be able to keep us up and even worse if we go down could bankrupt us. I mean, look how that's fluctuated. It's crazy. It's not me either, by the way. I haven't been spending money. I haven't spent any money on players. In fact, let's go and let's go and have a look. So I like to have a look at uh, what players I've bought via the board confidence screen, because what you can do there is you can look at your transfers, click through to transfers. You get a pretty good overview of the players that you've bought and sold um, and also the kind of um, reaction of the fans to those players. So these are, these are the ones that went out towards the bottom here. And I'll talk about these in a minute because I have actually got rid of some players since you last were here. But look, free transfer, 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 free transfer loan, just a zero pound transfer, zero pound transfer, a loan, 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 zero pounds. And, and that's it. So you can see, like, I've, I've literally spent no money on the players that I've brought in. And some of them have been re really, really good. So, you know, I've been happy with that. But that's not responsible for the crippling finances. So what is causing this? To be honest, I don't really know. We're not paying a huge amount in wages for players. We are playing, paying quite a lot for staff wages, and that's something that I want to get down. I would like to get rid of, well, a lot of my staff, basically. You know, it's we shouldn't be paying more for staff wages than we are for player wages, really, should we? So we're going to have to get rid of some of those. So here, here are all of our staff ordered by their wage. You can see straight away, look who's earning the most. It's me. I probably probably shouldn't have done that. But, but what I wanted to point out here is that basically everybody's contract expires on the 30th of the 6th, 2020, apart from one or two. So Giorgio Bazzarini, um, Massimo Costa, um, and are there any others? No, I think it's just those two. The reason I was able to pick them out quite quickly is you can see they've got this little yellow icon next to them. So what that means is that I've, it means I've created a note, basically, on that on that member of staff. Reminding me, the note's just called SAC, <laughs> reminding me to get rid of them. That's just reminding me that I need to get rid of this member of staff on a certain date. So there will be a reminder two days before they're due to renew their contract for me to not renew their contract, basically. Everybody else, I've had a quick look, and I can't get rid of any of them without incurring massive costs and having to pay them off. So it looks like we're going to have to wait until 30th of the 6th, 2020, to get rid of most of the stuff that we need to get rid of. So in the moment, we're just going to have to continue as we are, getting more and more progressively financially crippled, and hope that we can get to the 30th of the 6th, 2020, get rid of all this stuff, get promoted, get some money from that, and just get some decent loanies and youngsters in and, and, and be very, very shrewd in the transfer market. Weirdly though, I just wanted to bring your attention back to this um, board confidence screen because the very weird thing is that for some reason, the board are really happy in term, well, are pleased in terms of club finances. And I don't know if that means that they're pleased in terms of my handling of my part of the club finances or whether... They're just happy to be hemorrhaging money left, right, and centre. So yeah, it's it's all a little bit it's all a little bit confusing. And I always find finances confusing in Football Manager. But what appears, and especially if you go on this screen, look, what appears to be an absolutely horrendous spike uh, in this graph doesn't seem to be concerning the board at all. So I just want to come back to this screen very quickly, which is the transfer activity and, well, more specifically, the fan reactions to transfer activities. But these are the players that since the last episode I've got rid of. Unfortunately, Alessio Sestu is gone. He's a good player, but he didn't fit into our system. We managed to get 12k for him, so that's not bad. What do the fans think of that? Unhappy about him because he was a key player. Okay, fair enough. I don't care. He wasn't doing anything and he wasn't playing, so fuck you. Massimiliano Pesente, a striker that we weren't using. He's gone for 4k. Same thing happened with um, Fumagalli, who was our second choice goalkeeper. Now, actually, he is off. He was our first choice goalkeeper before we brought in Marco Believe. As soon as Believe goes back off loan, we haven't got a first choice goalkeeper. So, 
I went and signed a couple of goalkeepers. Alessandro Berardi, and he is a backup player, essentially. He's he's going to be our goalkeeper on the bench. So I also picked up a second keeper because just in case Marco Believe does go and we do end up having to play Berardi, we're going to need another keeper on the bench. So I got this guy, Rhino Luliano, and he looks like a bit of a rhino, actually, doesn't he? So just before we get to the game, I need to introduce you to this guy, Jordan Leboyne. Leboyne? Leboyne? So Jordan Leboyne is a Guadalupian. I actually signed him at the very beginning of the save. I was basically after a Mazzala. I was desperate for a Mazzala because I wanted cover for Simone Della Lata. Again, I signed him on a free, like everybody that I've signed, but he wasn't available to join the team straight away. So basically, he's joined at a later date. Della Lata got suspended for a game, so I threw Leboyne in. Leboyne? Leboyne? Something like that. I feel like it's Leboyne. Leboyne? Maybe I'm going to call him Leboyne? Yeah, so I threw I threw Leboyne in, and he played amazingly, and he scored, and he's been pretty good. I think that might have been that game, actually. He got nine points. He got 9.6. Just ridiculous. Which game was that there? Oh yeah, he got he got a hat trick and a nine point six and nine point six rating, like crazy. So I was like, I'm gonna have to start putting this guy in a bit more. So I did, and I put him in. He's played three, four, five, six. He played six games since then. So I'm kind of rotating him with Della Lata basically, because Della Lata is still a brilliant player. I don't want to drop him completely, but it's just really nice to have have that cover. And again, the the great thing about Jordan Leboyne is he is a Piacenza player. He's not on loan. He's contracted to us, the same as Della Lata. So, you know, at least we're going to have two players if we go up. So today we're playing Novara. Novara 8th in Serie C. Ah, again, like most of the teams in Serie C, ah, I don't envis- envisage them being much of a threat to us. No one really has been. Um, what is there to say about them? Oh, they are, yeah, this is the interesting thing. They play in the Silvio Piola Stadium. It's not the same Silvio Piola Stadium that we did a stadium visit of, a couple of stadium visits back. It is a second Silvio Piola Stadium. And actually, if you you read the information on that video, you would have seen that basically when Silvio Piola, the player, died, a couple of teams that he had played for in the past, uh, who he'd been a kind of legend for in the past, uh, created new stadiums named after him. So that's why they have this stadium. Schiau, Schiudoni? How do you say that? Schiudoni? It looks all right. This is a ve- it's kind of a very typical type of Serie C A player. There tend to be a lot of kind of around 30 year old decent central midfielders in Serie C A. Uh, captain is Daniele Cacchia? Cacchia? <laughs> Cassia? Cacchia? It's probably Cacchia, isn't it? Um, and again, he, he doesn't look too bad. He's 35 years old, though, so. 18 appearances, 11 goals, so he's not doing too badly at the moment. And also, although they're eighth at the moment, their media prediction was third, so they might actually be an okay team. Plus, look who they've got playing for them. Ronaldo. He's had a bit of a facelift. Do you know what? I'm not even really going to bother looking at the Navarra report that much because, well, I'm going to click on it, but I'm not going to go into too much detail with it just because we're probably just going to beat them. (laughs) So, nothing much to report here, apart from the fact that we are going to give Benedetti a chance as attacking midfielder. It's a slightly rotated squad, basically. We've taken Triani out. We're resting Triani because he's coming back from an injury, so he's not totally match fit. So, Mulas comes in for Triani. Leboyne comes in. Leboyne! <laughs> I've got to work out how, to say, how I'm going to pronounce his name because I can't keep saying that because it makes me feel weird. Leboyne, Leboyne, he's, he's right, Leboyne, he's going to be called Leboyne, right, Leboyne as the Mazzale, he's playing for, instead of Della Lata, giving Della Lata a rest, and um, we've got Pomp- Pompetti in there, the youngster, he can play well in that position, and has been playing well in that position, so may as well stay there, other than that, everything else is pretty much as is, oh, I should mention we've got Pegreffi back, um, Pegreffi uh, had a fractured skull, um, and now he's back from that injury. So we, we, we've got a slightly, slightly rotated squad. But I think it's still way strong enough to beat these. Okay, let's get this show on the road. So, Serie C. Uh, we're at the Leonardo Garelli Stadium, which is our stadium. So we're playing at home. Give this to the assistant. This is like, this is the thing you see. It's like, because it's all become so easy. I'm just, 
going through the motions now. I'm just like, hand to assistant, blah, blah, blah. Nothing happened to him. Navarro have had a shot. Interesting, 56% of the possession. This is unheard of. Usually we're about 3-0 up by now. This is not good. This is terrible. Demand more. Four shots to two. Nothing's happening. There must be no clear-cut chances. It's a joke. Okay, Pompetti. Barloco scores. That's more like it. This was... That was weird. 39... 38 minutes before the first highlight. What a joke. Oh, well. We're ahead. And as you can see, I'm kind of... I'm not... I wouldn't say I'm deflated by it, but I'm not really enthused by it. It's like we're just winning every game and it feels a bit like at the moment, honestly, it feels a bit like we, we just can't lose. Another corner from Pompetti. Barloco for his second goal. Just, it, it's just too easy. Barloco, right place, right time, just smashes it in. Barloco's a great player. <laughs> I'm at the point now where I'm feeling like... Is there any point even putting this episode on the channel, you know, like, it's just an easy win. Ooh, Leboin. Leboin, Leborn, Leboin, Leborn, Leboin? Le Jason Bourne. Let's just call him Le Jason Bourne. I mean, he's going to finish top scorer no matter what, I think, but I'd like him to get a decent amount. It'd be nice to get another record in Serie A. Chia. I praise him and let's see if we can see the goal after I praise him. Another easy win? Well, they're not coming back now, are they? Nico, Triani, come on, let's get another. Three nils are kind of pretty normal scoreline for us. Three or four. Long throw routine. No. Too easy. It's just too easy. So that's a bit flat, wasn't it? Although, look at what I've uh, just noticed. We have secured a playoff spot, so we will definitely be in the playoffs, no matter what. But Ideally, we want to finish first. Look, I'm not even excited about being in the playoffs. I just, honestly, I just want to get get this season over with and get into Serie B and get going in Serie B and get, get a bit of a challenge. I want to go and do a stadium visit there and go and have a look at the beach. So, Olbia will be the next game on the channel. And then, from there, I don't know where we'll go. I mean, Caradesi has second, so that might be a good team to play. Um... But other than that, I'll probably just blast through and try and get as close to the end of the season as possible. Maybe come back for a uh, non provincial maybe Galsano or Ponte, even just Pontedera. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Sorry it's a little bit flat, but I'm just too fucking good. The sooner we can get promoted, the better, because it, it, it is dragging on a little bit. I mean, it's not its not dragging on, it's fun, and it's good to see the players scoring, but like, and you know, the team winning, obviously, I mean, that's why you play the game, that's what you want to do, but it's looking like we might go the full season undefeated, which is great, you know, that's an achievement, but it's a bit boring. I want a challenge. So, we want to get to Serie B as soon as possible. Like I said, the next game is going to be Olbia, just because we want to go visit the beach, but after that, I don't know. I, I need to. I need to decide. So, um, leave a comment. Tell me what you think I should do. Should I come back for one of those games, or should I just blitz through, get to the end of the season, and 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 we we start again in Serie B? I think one other game after Albion might be the way to do it, just so that at least you see us getting promoted, and then who knows, Serie B and some much more difficult games. So, thanks for watching. See you soon.